Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at the Accenture Technology Vision 2018 pre-event. The actual paper comes out in a couple days. We got invited for a preview. We're excited to be here. We came last year and it's pretty wild. You know, five big trends influencing the technology world. Accenture's at the leading edge, so we're happy to be here. We've got a new guest, Jason Welch. He's the Managing Director of Accenture's Extended Reality. How you doing? Great to see you. Nice to meet you. So you guys are not doing AR, VR, ER, BR. You've come up with it. You kind of grabbed it all in Extended Reality. Right, sort of like XR. I could I like stand it. for every one of them. I like it. So you're running this business. You know, give us kind of an update, how it's evolving. You know, we see the devices, the movies are starting to come out, but it's still so nascent. It is, but uh, you know, what we're seeing, we've seen a lot of it shift from a year ago, two years ago, all this stuff was being done in the innovation lab. So the corporate innovation lab, sitting in Silicon Valley, they were trying things out, proof of concepts and what have you. We've seen a shift now where it's the business starting to push the agenda. So it, maybe it's the VP of operations, maybe it's the chief learning officer, um, and I think that trend's a big difference because it starts to mean the business is seeing this as it could provide value. Now, still we're seeing a lot of pilots, so we've kind of moved from the proof of concept to the pilot, to some major deployments, um, but it's a pretty big trend that we that, that shift. Even, you know, we're starting to see RFPs come out. Right, right. Which again, is another key signpost that this is moving beyond that just test and learn phase to actually real implementations. So it's pretty interesting. We talked to Baobab Studios and they make movies in, um, in VR, yep. and, it's, and you know, it's, it's kind of an interesting parallel when they used to make movies as just filming what used to be on stage, right? And it takes a while to understand kind of this new platform and to start to operate in that new platform. Are there some examples that you can, that you've seen where it's no longer just a 3D version of what I used to do in 2D, but actually start to take advantage of this new medium? Yeah, well I think, you know, in terms of, the different types of training, so we look, look at immersive training, or VR training, uh, probably the hottest segment of the, you know, we kind of have the world broken down into 10 different segments. The immersive training is definitely the hottest of the 10 segments that we're seeing client interest in. I mean, partially because it applies to every organization, right? They all, so they move them from CBT to VR type training. And I think in that space, there's still a lot of, a lot to be learned around, okay, how do I reinvent that experience? I could do things in three dimensions. I could create pers like the idea of presence where I'm actually kind of getting to the subconscious level of people. If I can recreate an experience to them, it's pretty real. Right. So just understanding how to use the medium and not just repeat that same CBT-based training right. uh, is an evolution that we're going through right now. So you know, the creative directors, the experienced designers that are used to 2D are having to relearn this, this, this medium. And, and that's a specific use case where we're seeing the, you know, some of those challenges and some of the opportunities. And what is it about, the, what are some of the things they're discovering that, that it's either makes it easier learning, better learning, is it just a different type of experience or there is, is the types of experience that they can now throw in a training environment so different than they could ever represent before? Well, I think, you know, the, well, one of the things is you can do training in, in situations you couldn't have done before. You know, put somebody in a nuclear power plant meltdown. Right, can't really do that in the real world. I can drop you into VR, and, and again, this idea, if you do it really well, you know, to the mind, it, it's pretty much real. Right. So I could put someone through that pressure cooker multiple times over and over again, um, and it's just, I can't do that in, in the real world. And right. If I do that in two dimensions on a flat screen, you know, I'm not getting that, that lingering effect right. where you know, I actually felt like I went through the experience. And, and you know the military has been doing that for years, so recreating types of situational awareness, simulations, uh, to, to basically get people prepared for that. Now you see companies like Walmart. Paul talked about right. you know, Walmart doing it for Black Friday. Right. It's kind of crazy. Uh, so that's what you know. I think that's <laughs> Poor the difference. Four guys stretch it out on Black Friday. Exactly. It's like, over and over it's and like over. Eight again. weeks before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so I think those kind of you know, think about inclusion and diversity training, you know, sexual harassment training. So. Things that the medical field has been looking at VR for, like treating post-traumatic stress syndrome or, or um, you know, addiction therapy, they've been doing that for a number of years now. So, you know, how do you take that in a, in a good way, in an ethical way, and start to apply that to, right. to, to, to training? And, and you know, the thing there is, is I think this is why we're in the early stages of some of that, is we need more data around the effectiveness of it. 
So the academic research says it's going to be better, like right? because that spatial awareness, the right. fact that it, right. like, I've recreated a real situation in my head. Um, but we just need more metrics and more data that shows the really the powerful effect of that over time. Okay. And I think that's what some of our clients are waiting for. And you said there's kind of ten categories. You guys have broken it down. What are some of the other leading ones beyond education? Sure. Um, so you know, if I take, I'll just run through them real quick. We would kind of break the world into enterprise use cases where the user of the glasses or the headsets is an employee, and then the consumer base or customer base use cases. On the enterprise side, we're looking at the value chain from uh, design and engineering, um, kind of manufacturing and operations is the second category, immersive training being the third, uh, pretty much the digital workplace, so the idea, if you saw the demo, the teleportation, so I replaced video conferencing with, with VR conferencing. I don't know if I'm ready for that, yeah, exactly. based, on how well the, <laughs> based on how well teleconferences work I don't today. Necessarily we save that one to the end. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to be sitting at home, you know, in, in my loungewear yeah. on the, uh, the, the Trying VR to die, conference. and then you get stuck, right? Yeah. You're stuck, I can't get out, I'm stuck on the conference call. Uh, All right. And then on the consumer side, there's sort of the obvious use case, immersive marketing. Right? We've had digital marketing for years, we had the web, we had mobile, now we're going to have AR and VR. And that's going to be a big advertising space for, for brands. Uh, and you look at co companies like Unity are doubling down on how they're going to enable that. So immersive marketing, the AR, VR, commerce, um, post-sale services, and, uh, and then you know, a big category is the, you know, not just AR or VR and how it enables the value chain, but how is it going to become a product feature? or brand new products that companies can go after. So, right. you know, augmented reality in the car. We already have huds up displays, but we have driverless cars. You're going to start to put VR inside of the driverless cars as an entertainment platform. Um, so, that, you know, that's a whole different sort of segment beyond just how do I, how do I, uh, enable the value chain, right. how do I actually start to, to create new products and services and new monetization streams. So early really still to figure out you know, what to do with this medium, which you really haven't had before. Yeah. And in fact, the guys at the, at the Baobab said, not only do they have to figure out what to do with the medium, but the only way to do it is to actually do the development inside the medium. You, know, you don't develop outside, then go in and check it out, it doesn't work. You got to be actually in the medium itself to be doing really effective development. Well, I think what's interesting is you look at the studios that are really kind of moved into the VR space for entertainment. Um, Penrose Studios here in San Francisco, great studio, they're just so amaz amazing work. They are ones that are pushing the envelope, just like the movie industry did, on the tools to create VR. Right. Well, that, those, those, those innovations will find their way into the main street tools for all those of us who aren't creating entertainment. You know, but we still need the tools to right. create these types of right. experiences. All right, Jason, well, it's going to be an exciting year, and I look forward to, uh, to an update a year from now. Yeah. Sounds, sounds good. All right. He's Jason Wells. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE from the Accenture Technology Vision 2018. Thanks for watching. Catch you next time.